Hey, it's Dabuli, back from some time off, here to talk to my friend Tristan about maps I make for Atlas Altera, a creative project where we use a familiar but different map of the world to tell the story of humanity. Today, we're talking about place names, or etymologies, and this is the second part of a lengthy conversation we recorded earlier in the summer. In the last episode, we talked about the names of continents and landmasses of Altera. Today, we go down a scale to regions. To follow along, look for the map we're talking about on atlasaltera.com, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so now um, let's uh, jump into the regions. So, so where, where do you want to start? What makes the most logical? Uh, let, let's go to the Mediterranean Basin, because uh, it diverges the least. But also, the audience is probably most familiar with it. So oh, yeah. Okay. We'll go with Europe. So, Europe unchanged. But, it's interesting. In our world, Europe loses the A. It's not Europea or Europa. I just wanted to be analytically consistent with the suffixing, because it came from this. Mm -hmm. um, but... I haven't decided if people are going to call it Europe without the A, like a silent A, mm -hmm. as people would say Guinea. Like today, Guinea is still written with an A, but people just say Guinea. So it could be Guinea or, or Guinea. And of course, people say Guinean, like a Guinea, a person from Guinea, and European, but they might just say Europe. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, the other thing is, um, for some reason, I just, uh, for my own sake, I wanted to uh, distinguish country level suffixes, like Ia with the I, mm -hmm. with the Ia with the E, because you could like historically they could be transcribed interchangeably. I just made it so that the beyond the country level everything was Ia yeah. with the E. Right. Okay. Okay. Let's move. Yeah. Then so then you have Libya, which we you know quickly mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, for essentially North Africa, North Africa yeah. and the Maghreb. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. North Africa, and Libya. Uh, it comes from an endonym of people, the Libu, Libu. Uh, I don't really know what it means, but basically it's it's from time immemorial, like olden times, people called the northern coast of the Mediterranean Libya. And then Africa came a little later, actually. So Africa was a very small part of the world that became a whole continent, whereas Libya used to be more of the macro region, mm. right? So Africa comes from like this one place of contact that uh, that became a Roman province. And then Europeans just started calling all of the uh, continent Africa. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so Libya is like that, so it's for North Africa. And then generally, what you think of as East Africa, West Africa, and South Africa corresponds to these next three toponyms. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so I mean, for example, uh, we, we mentioned uh, Ethiopia earlier. Yeah, yeah, Ethiopia um, kept moving. And kept moving, right? And then, so here at the region level, you chose Eritrea. Yeah, well, like, so it's cognitive Eritrea, our modern day Eritrea. Which is interesting because it's a tiny country. Yeah, but Eritrea uh, gets its name, uh, they, it's not an endonym. Eritrea comes from the Greek word uh, for red. Mm. So Eritrea is, a, is the saying, like, they're associating themselves with the Western world's idea of the Red Sea. Mm. So they're not using anything related to them. Red so sea. Eritrea is, is, yeah, to do okay. with the Red Sea. Okay. Uh, uh, Guinea? I actually forget, like, basically Guinea is just like how, how Western Africa became called, you know, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Guinea, 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 and like how people said Guinea fowl, like Guinea was a macro concept, Right. it just didn't, it didn't mean just one part, like it was kind of like Ethiopia, it just kept moving for Western Africa, mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, it would make sense for this area to be called mm -hmm. Guinea, so I don't... That's true, I mean, because in today's modern world, we have the Gulf of Guinea, Yeah. we have uh, Guinea Equatorial. Yeah, we have yeah. Guinea Bissau, we have Guinea. Yeah, yeah so, so it moves. It's a it's mm -hmm. a word that does a lot of work. Mm -hmm. so it's one of probably the earliest toponyms came into right. contact with. Okay, and so I mean these three toponyms for African regions I have come across, yeah, but quite uh, not the uh, Azania. So Azania comes actually it's from like it's interesting. There's two two peoples who would connect with it. East Africans know it as Zanj. Zanj is. Um, from the Muslim world for a long, long time, there's like the famous Zanj rebellion, which happened not in Africa, but in the Mesopotamia, a uh, rebellion of the slaves. And the slaves actually at that time were actually already black in that area. So the Muslims had this whole thing, you know, black slaves came to the Muslim world quite easily through the Bakht, Bakht um, pact, you know, between Nubia, Christian Nubia and Egypt. And they had to, every year for peace, they had to trade slaves. So for a long, long time, uh, slaves from sub-Saharan Africa were making their way into the Muslim world. And so you had a whole rebellion that was characterized as being the uh, uprising of the blacks. Because Zanj means black, um, dark of skin. But it's actually not Arabic. I think it's Farsi. So it's like a Arabo perso arabic word. Um, because black, uh, the cognate, the black word is Sud, uh, Sudan, right? Uh, Bilad Sudan is land of the blacks in Arabic. In Southern Africa, 
that during like uh, kind of de uh, decolonization, they identified with this word. So you can see Zan shifting. Zanj went from referring to it just like Zanzibar, by the way. So Zanzibar means mm. uh, like it's a completely Arabic uh, Persian word because Ibar, I think, like means island of or something or. And it's, Ibar is a perso, it, it, Urdu almost. Like, you know, you can hear a lot of words with toponyms with bar at the end of it. Sorry, you can see Zanj migrating south, basically. Okay, mm -hmm. is the point. Uh, and in independence and decolonization in our world, uh, people identified with that and they started using az Azania. So Azania actually is like a, a political term, even in our world. Like people say Azania. In in South Africa, there was a uh, there was a movement to name South Africa Azania. Anyway, so this is me conflating two things together and putting them together to make mm -hmm. it work for my world. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's um, a word which would be more available than uh, Gandrasia, for example. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because I it's actually I, used. Yeah, I didn't okay. have to make it from scratch. Uh -huh. Okay, so then um, then you have Asia. Asia unchanged. It's actually unchanged. what Asia has always been for. Like Asia, before it was doing all this work and lifting, used to just refer to this. Mm -hmm. The and Asians so, were Persians and they were Arabs. Right. And, and so, Anatolians. I mean, your, your Asia region essentially covers the Arabic Peninsula uh, and uh, Central Asia. Yeah. And the Caucasus. Well, right? actually, let's, let's do some uh, extra defining here. Like, um, like, it's easy to see continents. Like, you can see why I have Borealia separate from Africa because there's that there's just taro, uh, narrow isthmus. But other parts of the, like for regions, it, maybe people need extra context of why I'm separating them this way. So Erith Erythria is separated this way because of the Nile River Basin. People would have said Egypt should belong to North Africa, but I had to cut it somewhere. And I decided um, that the cataracts were just like, you know, the Nile has all these cataracts that separated travel. No, like the Egyptians had this whole history of a north-south travel so I decided to make the Egyptians connected with all of Eritrea, okay? Because they're all connected to the Red Sea as well. Libya is separated from um, not only the desert. So it used to be historically Libya just stuck to the Sahara, but I have it in my lore that it got increased culturally as a perspective when they started migrating, like Muslims started having contact with the Niger Delta. So the inland Delta of the Niger River. And so Lake Chad and the Sahel area are now seen as also part of Libya, just South Libya. Mm. Um, which is a little uh, unconventional, but that's so that uh, you can do, you can see more of the um, real kind of like what we call sub-Saharan Africa, like the tropical parts of Africa and the areas where the people are like more um, distinctly uh, ethno-linguistically connected because, you know, like the Mandinka, the Songhai, uh, a lot of languages in the Sahel are actually quite divergent from the rest of Africa. So anyway, that that's just a, besides the point. So West Africa it's a little harder to define. Basically, the Sahel is its border. And then going east, it hits either um, it hits either the Nile Basin or it hits uh, the Rift Valley. So the um, Virunga Mountains, like, you know, the big uh, mountains just before the, the Rift Lakes. Uh, and then when you go south, uh, it's just beyond the Congo tropical rainforest would be another area. And that's because... Um, Azania is actually all on one plateau. If you look at the map of southern Southern Africa, all of Southern Africa is on a huge plateau with giant escarpments along all its coastline. And so that makes sense as another kind of way of dividing it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go to Europe and Asia, the separation obviously is the Sea of Marmara, the Bosphorus, and the Dardanelles. That makes sense. But then Caucasia, that also makes sense. Like instead of Caucasia being part of Europe now, the Caucasus are the borders between Europe and Asia uh, because historically historically they've always been part of the Asian cultural realm but Asia of antiquity the Asia of like Armenia of Persia of Mesopotamia um, and then the northern border was the hardest to define the northern border for Asia was um, the kind of the when I made the Caspian and Aral Sea a lot larger you could start seeing a way of dividing it plus uh, the step. So um, be, be, before, uh, so the, sorry, from, there's an arid desert, right? The, the Karakorum, no, Karakorum or Karakorum desert. There's that desert in Central Asia that separates it from the true grassland step, right? Mm -hmm. So that's just a good transition zone, Oxiania. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you go east, 
Asia really gets uh, um, there's an impasse, right? Um, in the real world, this was a major impasse for most people. Everyone had to go through this one little valley um, to get to China. That valley was a little hole amongst a whole barrier of mountains. So the Tin Shan Mountains, all the way down to the Kushan, uh, the Hindu Kush, okay? And then, so that was separate East and South Asia, right? In our world. So in, in this world, East and South Asia are India and Serica, which are quite explainable, right? People know what India is, defined by the Indus River. And uh, I actually don't know where Indus comes from, but... Um, you know, people can find that easily. That's easily available. Mm -hmm. Serica, though, comes from the Roman word for um, silk. And historically, the, the Romans actually had two names for China. They, they actually, they actually called China Serica first, land of the silk, where they got the silk from. China comes via the Indians. China comes from Sina. Sina comes from the Qin dynasty, the first dynasty of China. So Serica predated that. And I just thought that, you know, Serica was just like kind of like Ethiopia this land in the far east They didn't really know all the geographies of it. So Serica just could be easily applied to a whole area And so that's why Serica is a re, uh, a region level mm -hmm. And then you have uh, Siberia up north. Yeah, so Siberia um, Was the hardest like it's the least densely populated like the population wise doesn't compare to these other ones but um, by creating that inland sea, I could totally see this other mm -hmm. landmass because, or this other continent, mm -hmm. or, or this other division, because it's separated by that sea. Plus, it's separated by this whole arc of um, topographical barriers to the south. I actually really wanted to put like, you know, like Mongolia and all that part part of it, because you know the Gobi Desert would be a good barrier. Mm -hmm. But between, but like west, uh, east of the Gobi Desert was like, it, it just was messy because the desert wasn't fully. A good way of dividing all of it. So I used this whole arc of mountains going from the Tinshan Mountains all the way to, uh, I think they're called the Kagan or actually, you know, very, people know very little about the mountain ranges in, Cyber, in the Russian Far East. Like, I think it's called the Karovsky, Karovsky Mountains or whatever. Like, um, these mountain ranges over here, people don't know the names of as easily. Um, but you can see there's a whole arc of a mountain. So that kind of separated the northern Asians that the Chinese knew from the true like northern peoples that were just beyond what the Chinese knew. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's Siberia. And, oh, and Sibir comes from uh, the Sibir Khanate that controlled most of Siberia mm -hmm. in our world uh, before the Russians took it over. So Sibir has a very romantic name if you believe in this. So Sibir can mean sleeping land in Kipchak in the Turkic languages. Uh, and from an older Turkic root, Saryarka, uh, which means uh, this side of a mountain, like leeward side of a mountain or windward side of a mountain because it's the side exposed to the sun. So the, the yang side of a mountain, if you think of yin yang. It also could mean wild land, Subir. So Siberia has a lot of uh, um, supposed etymologies, but you can find that online. But Siberia is a real place. And in Russia, at least, it just means a huge swath of Russia, right? The eastern parts of Russia. So it just makes sense as like a regional level. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay, Sumatra and Tamiria I had a lot of fun with. Okay, so we're going to Gondrasia here. Uh, well, first of all, Polynesia is part of this, of uh, part of Gondrasia. Polynesia is easy. Polynesia is like, the mini, the, like, it means archipelago, right? Land, uh, mini lands. Uh, and no, mini islands. Nisia means island. Poly means many. And so Polynesia, unchanged, it's like a, a regional name that makes sense for Europeans to come across and name. But Sumatra and Tamiria are from the Indic world. So the Europeans go to uh, this area called Gondra Gondrasia and they go like, oh, so what are these two, what are the regions here? And th that shows that the Indians have already been going to what we call Australia for a long time. So they're familiar with it. And they can distinguish that land of the south with the archipelago of Sumatra. So Sumatra used to be also a place that kind of kept moving around. So the Indians had this idea of Swarna Dvipa or Swarna Bumi. Okay, so they had gold land applied to this part in the east, which could have been an epithet, right? A land that was wealthy instead of just meaning a land that literally had gold. Um, and so some, the island of Sumatra that we have in our world 
uh, be, came to be called that. But actually, the island of Sumatra used to also have another name, Lemuri. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I said, okay, well, if Sumatra has another name, so let's let's make Sumatra this whole thing, and you know, it means wealth. So it kind of like people would obviously want to do that um, if it's like a spice trading area. And then Tamiria is playing off of that gold theme, and I'm like, okay, land of copper. Uh, Tam- uh, Tamiria comes from yeah Tamra Tam- Tamravarni Tamravarni okay Bumi. that supposedly means uh, copper so Tamravarni um, Bumi but historically um, Ceylon or Sri Lanka used to also have that toponym and there was like some kind of like mythical connection of of this land of copper so I was like okay it could easily become a whole landmass to itself like it could keep moving south instead of Sri Lanka like once Sri Lanka was known they're like oh no there was a fur- land further south. You know, because just like Tool, which we'll get to. Actually, we can talk about Tool now. The Thulia or Tula or Thula or Tula. I don't know how the Greeks do TH. Tula was this uh, mythical landmass that people kind of had empirical evidence that existed. But it just meant west of what Europe was. So it used to apply to Iceland. When Iceland was known, it was applied to Greenland. And you can see it get applied further west. Okay, as you know more and more of the world. And so that's why Thulia in, in this world is called Thulia because the Norse contact, as we explained in another video, happens with, you know, and is preserved. Like it keeps happening, like the contact is maintained uh, in Northeast um, America or what I call Septentria. So that's why Thulia gets, that's how Thulia gets its name. But yeah, back to here, um, this copper land keeps moving south maybe. So there, there's that one thing, mm-hmm. but also... The soil is so noticeably red, copper colored soil it could be an epithet. Makes sense, yeah. Anyway, that's that's a cool yeah, that's yeah. a cool reasoning yeah. for the naming of these uh, these regions. Yeah. And then um, I guess that brings us to Satisha, which is your um, Kerguelen Plateau uh, brought, uh, brought out up. of the seas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a surfaced. So Satisha. Uh, it's just uh, you know how Cetaceans are means whales, so yeah, it just means yeah. land of whales. Land of whales. Uh, so it's, cool. well, it's kind of uninspired, but like I just needed something. Um, I didn't want to call it Kirkluwen, Kirkluwen, yeah, mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. and then I guess you have also on the east uh, the Malvinia. 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 Now yes. this one is a play off of the whole Malvinas Islands Falklands thing, but mm-hmm. also I found out that Malvinas is named after the a French town from uh you know, being named after this port town. Okay, Malo, say Malo. Or... Mm-hmm. So Malo, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Malvinas is what the Argentines consider Falklands. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Falklands... But every country has its own name for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, th- this is a naming dispute, but the naming dispute goes back only like 200 years. So it's like different from like the older mm-hmm. kind of disputes, like let's say Macedonia, mm-hmm. right? Well, yeah. yeah. Kind, of, kind of crazy that a small fishing town in France... Has brought its name to whole region. Well, here's the thing. Like, I just really like the sound of yeah. Mal- uh, of Malvines. I just really like the the, uh, the ring of it. But normally, I try not to have those kind of more uninspired, kind of like just named after mm-hmm. people or, or a town. And mm-hmm. uh, I really wanted to do something with Terra del Fuego. But Terra del Fuego refers to some other part of the world. And it's, it's actually uh, um, smuggled in as a country name. Mm-hmm. Terra del Fuego. But Terra del Fuego is just it's so cool. Like, it's such an image. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's an image, if you know the context of it, it's even cooler. Mm-hmm. It was named not because of fire, but it was named after seeing lights in pitch dark. So they're sailing, and they saw a land littered with fa- fires being lit, uh, which me- meant that they saw natives, right, in the dark, these uh, these ex- European explorers in this, like, you know, cold area. Anyway, so yeah, um, so those are the two areas that are part of like Cis Antarctica. So now let's mm-hmm. move into. Yeah, and I guess if we just go up uh, the Americas. Yeah, yeah. We have for South America, well, the southern part of South America, which would be Tierra del Fuego and mm-hmm. Patagonia and yeah. Chile and all that is Platinia. Platinia. Now it comes from Plata, Plata silver. Rio money. de las Platas. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it comes from that because I thought. If the Andes was kind of like a North Korea, like, you know, isolated, and the Spanish were re- relegated to the island of Lima as like Macau. So the island of Lima is a fake place that I created just so you could have the Spanish history of mm. Peru. Um, but uh, if that part of the world was less access accessed by the Europeans, 
then most of what they would see as like the southern part of, and the you know the more the the mountainous west and south they would more readily identify with the Rio de la Plata okay uh, which it, I don't actually know where it comes from with the, is it like the color of the estuary like the water um, is being like very murky in a gray way or if they were just trying to say like there's a lot of riches to be earned here I'm not sure um, that's something I'm actually not very curious about because it just like you know uh, Sumatra or whatever it's just like a good sounding name I'm like Chinese people love naming aus- places auspicious things like gold it, 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 I think it's a lot better than naming places after people's names yeah anyways <laughs> uh, so it, it plays off a known geography in our world too mm-hmm. so it makes sense and also there's the vice royalty of Rio de la Plata so it could make sense as a bigger mm-hmm. term now I really wanted to use the word Andina Andina just sounds so so good like Andina is just a nice ring to it okay the problem is that uh, Andina is a real region in my world uh, but not a re- at the region level it's in it's within Peru and because the Andes comes from the name of East. Uh, it's like a Easter. It comes from Antisuyu. Antisuyu uh, means something. Uh, it means anti quarter. Suyu means quarter in Quechua. And anti was the name of, I think, the people they conquered and which they then applied to all of their Eastern quarter. So Peru is called Tawantin Suyu, the four quarters. Okay. And Antisuyu was one of those quarters. So Antisuyu and the Andes will always be, or Andina or whatever, like maybe Europeans will call it Antisuyu Andina. That's already reserved for somewhere else. So you can't have Andina. So I was like, okay, the next best thing is Platinia. Mm-hmm. Meridia now, going back to the thing about um, Septentrion, right? Mm-hmm. The opposite of Septentrion is Meridion, right. Merid- Meridinual, yep. right? And we looked this up earlier, uh, Meridi, um and it has ties to Midi, although Midi no longer means south as much. But Meridi, Meridional, all of these come from the fact that when the sun is at midday, it's like hottest. But also, um, it's a, it's most southern location if you're underneath it. Something like that. I forget. Um, but it's to do with like the uh, Romans uh, using midday, like the location of the sun at midday, to refer to south. Again, another epithet um, for cardinal south um and so um i could have used it for the southern continent of like crucia but i decided uh crucia what might have um it had an extra layer of not only an epithet for south but had the star theme that aligned with septentrion mm-hmm. anyway so meridia just makes sense because it's the first landmass south of the um, uh, caribbean that the spanish are exploring so they just naturally could call it the land of the south even though further south to it is platinia mm-hmm. anyway yeah yeah then colombia so i could have gone with uh like an indigenous name but uh, so this is for the mesoamerica region well it's not just mesoamerica it's the caribbean and mesoamerica right meridia platinia crucia, crucia none of these are indigenous derived names so obviously it's like the map makers get to decide the europeans get to decide and there was no indigenous word that came to apply to too big of an area right and Dina would have been one of those, but I decided to relegate it to the you know, Peru. Um, so Caribbean, I really like that. Caribbean could have been one. Um, I might actually in the future change it like in a map update. But Colombia was just like, I was like, okay, I got to give a little bit of a kudos or a nod. You know, this whole thread thing, there's some credit to it, okay? That, you know, um, this bridging of two worlds, not new or old, but that Columbus did this, it's still worthy of praise, you know, it's still worthy of praise, but it's not worthy of a Columbia, a Columbus day. Uh, and it's not worthy of celebration in terms of like colonization, but it's just what he did was probably cool enough for the people to name a whole region after him. So it's, it's believable. Uh, it's actually probably the most ill suited term because when you think of Columbia, you need to think of Mesoamerica or you think of the Caribbean islands. But I just decided that we needed something to unite those two areas as one kind of region that was apart from like both South America and North America. Okay, now here's the other, uh, here's interesting. Hanunia. This is probably the only uh, like non-Greco-Roman or Sanskrit word mm-hmm. to make it. So we're talking about like Eastern America. US, yeah. yeah, but not just Eastern US. It refers to the Florida islands. Uh, that's not islands. The Florida countries, which are, you know, my Oklahoma, you know, mm-hmm. 
a trail of tears ends in Florida, not Oklahoma and, um, the great lakes countries. Okay. So, uh, Hanunia refers to the woodlands culture, both in the, like the, in the South and the North, right? Um, the Southern, like, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, it refers to the woodlands culture, but yeah, Han- Hanuna comes from the Iroquois word or Americans might say Iroquois, uh, the Iroquois, uh, word for a turtle Island, Hanuna. Um, and turtle Island is now used. It's a nod to like, um, indigenous politics. Uh, in that today, like, um, if you think about this though, Europeans were the first, Europeans were the first to decide to start classifying different scales of geographies, uh, around the world cultures were quite like, uh, like, um, myopic. They were like centered, uh, centric, like, uh, culturally they were quite centered on themselves. So they might just refer to the world as something beyond their own little bubble of a world. There's like the outside and then there's their known world right like china is, is famous for this mesoamerica too like they didn't have a name for the whole continent right or like both the americas and south america or just all north america they didn't have that um not none that i could decipher so turtle island is the next best thing it's now a like looking back in time a politically uh, inscribed term for north america which is that um there's this myth that uh the world is on the back of a turtle um, so, and this is a common myth and narrative in not just a wood, like woodlands is actually more of a myth and narrative in the peoples, uh, in Canada. So, um, the Ojibwe and the Cree, but, um, the Iroquois have this too. And I just used the word that they had Hanuna. And so, yeah, so, you know, it could be that the Europeans come in contact with them to like, Oh, what is this whole area, this whole giant part of the world? And they go like, Oh, it's turtle island or whatever so that that's yeah that's just one mm-hmm. uh indigenous toponym that is smuggled in his spirit athulia we talked about already it's just like this you know the western the westernmost mythical landmass kept migrating west and it's a big nod no it's a it's a nod to my earlier point uh in the coral in the um, in the previous video where we talked about the where we talked about sources of the nations the video about sources of nations and the confluence of culture. It's a big nod to that because I talked about how um, Norse contact could be revolutionary for the indigenous peoples as in like introducing certain things and allowing disease to happen more at a gradual um, pace, but it could have been non-revolutionary for Europeans because when they were discovering Iceland, Greenland, this was not important to people in Europe. They like monks were writing about it. There was like uh, churches uh, collecting taxes, you know, like the, the church knew about Greenland, but it was not uh, groundbreaking and it wasn't something everyone was like excited to talk about. Mm-hmm. New lands were being discovered, but it wasn't the same frenzy as the new lands of Columbus. So Thulia could have easily been just like this kind of mythical land further to the West that had a lot of contact with Europe but also didn't have a lot of contact. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Anyway, so yeah, that's Thulia. The, the last one is Hesperia. And Hesperia is defined by the Rocky Mountains, um, you know, the Cord- Cordillera of the Rockies. And it just, it comes from a Greco-Roman tradition. The Vespers or His- Hesperia cognate for basically land to the west. It comes from the Greek word, mm-hmm. uh, which um, originally meant a wind. It was like a wind goddess. Mm-hmm. Hesperides. Uh, opposite of Zephyrus or Zephyr. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it just meant Western wind, land of the West. Uh, Iberia used to also, used to be Hesperia too. So Spain used to be called Hesperia as a poetic kind of epithet. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was right a, on. Oh, and then yeah, in terms of like the land, uh, the way I distinguished it, Hanunia is defined between the Rockies and the Great Lakes basically. Uh, as well as the Missouri River. The Missouri River is running west to east at its uh, near its source for a long time before it goes south to the Mississippi. So it's like kind of defined by those three things. Uh, but yeah, these aren't like uh, as easily distinguishable as continents. And it's because there's way more culture uh, used to define it. There's way more of a cultural mm. lens to define th- these geographies. Yeah. Right. So it's a mix of culture and Slight physical barriers. features. Yeah. yeah. And it's usually a cause, a cause and effect thing, right? Because these physical uh, features will define 
uh, like you can use them to define the region, but also they will in themselves have dictated how peoples group themselves. Like a physical barrier will allow for less contact with people on the other side, right? So there's logistical issues that start allowing for these cultural gravity and centers to form. Anyway, that's uh, that's the gist of it. Well, another layer of meaning to the map. I think now we're ready to uh, dive a I little do. deeper into the map and look at what's happening within each region. That's yeah. going to take us some time, but I think it's uh, going to be really interesting. All right, I think that's a wrap, man. All right. Yeah, I could have done Caribbean. I should have, but I was. I guess I went conservative and just used Colombia. You know, like as in like Christopher Columbus. Damn, Caribbean does mm. sound cool. It does actually sound cooler. Damn it. Uh, Let's get next version, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I might, I, you know, I might be able to do a change at this late in the game. <laughs>